and welcome to Great SpaceX, a channel dedicated to daily updates on rockets in the space industry. And I can't wait to give you all of the latest updates and changes. Okay, let's dive right in. NASA finally restarted a two-day dress rehearsal countdown Tuesday for the SLS after a series of delays. But this test is just a modified format. And to think we waited all this time just to receive an incomplete test. But wait, it's not that disappointing. We're all used to this, but thoughts that these delays in development would give SpaceX's Starship an opportunity to leave SLS far behind. But that's not the case. SLS's delays have inadvertently created many barriers for its competitor. As a result, Starship has not yet flown and America is losing its dominance in the space industry. Starship is SpaceX's largest reusable rocket with the capacity of carrying more than 100 metric tons of cargo and crew per launch. Company CEO Elon Musk says Starship represents the holy grail for space travel, but the giant rocket vehicle is also crucial for SpaceX's future. Some experts have estimated that if SpaceX succeeds with Starship alongside Starlink, the company's global satellite internet venture, the space firm's valuation could skyrocket into the trillions of dollars. However, spacecraft development is a risky business and SpaceX is no stranger to explosions, ruptures, and failed landings. It can be said that no company has tested rockets as many times as SpaceX. They tried countless times, failed a lot, but also succeeded the most. That goes especially for SpaceX's Starship prototype. In just four months from December of 2020 to March of 2021, SpaceX tested four Starship prototypes. But of course, all four failed. Despite a series of consecutive failures, the company remained undeterred, continuing to plan for the next test. And in the end, Fortune smiled upon them on May 5th of 2021 when the Starship SN15 prototype launched and landed safely and didn't explode afterward. It can be seen that SpaceX's path to success was built on countless failures. Similar to their philosophy, failure is a compulsory step. The time that SpaceX spent on the development of Starship puts the SLS to shame. Not only has it been way cheaper, it also has been moving way quicker than NASA could ever dream of. And the willingness to fail, something that NASA and others have lacked for a very long time, is what enables SpaceX to move so fast, to rapidly iterate and improve. But now Starship itself is stuck with its first orbital flight because of the SLS. A lack of environmental approval has been the single most important bottleneck of orbital star-based launch operations for months. Even if they receive the final PEA at the end of April, SpaceX will also need to receive an FAA license for orbital Starship launches, which could take days, weeks, months, or even a year or more. And although Musk is extremely confident in SpaceX's alternatives, a Pad 39A Starship launch site just could be brought online in more than four to six months, at least if SpaceX refocuses all of its Starship resources to Florida. That timeline is actually still too optimistic, and we still have to wait patiently. At first glance, the fact that Starship ran aground was the FAA's fault. But as you may have discovered, the FAA is, after all, just a pawn in this game of space industry chess. And the person pulling the strings in all of this is the US government. Why is that? Well, this is closely related to SLS and their so-called honor. But it's more about saving face if you ask me. When Congress created the SLS in 2011, it directed NASA to fly the rocket before the end of 2016. The SLS will now launch no earlier than June of 2022 or more than five years behind schedule. For the Orion spacecraft, the situation is arguably worse. The spacecraft was intended to fly humans into deep space and it's unlikely to do so before at least 2024 with the Artemis II mission. This means NASA will have spent two decades developing a vehicle that is essentially a larger, modernized version of the Apollo capsule. Not only that, but they also spent an enormous amount of money up to more than $23 billion on this rocket that can only fly once. With such a terrible investment, if the SLS flies after Starship's launch, it would be a slap in the face to the US government and NASA. The government definitely won't allow this to happen. 
So then, as you know, Starship is still covered in dust at Starbase. But the US government has probably forgotten that it was SpaceX and Elon Musk who ended the United States' shameful, nearly decade-long dependence on Russia. In other words, without SpaceX, NASA would still be exclusively dependent upon Russian Soyuz rockets and spacecraft to get its ass... Astronauts to and from the space station it spent tens of billions of dollars to help build. Even in a best case SpaceX free scenario, NASA might instead be dependent upon a rocket with Russian engines to launch its own astronauts. SpaceX has saved the space industry for the United States, but the US government is getting in the way of their benefactor. Perhaps they should take a closer look at the current state of Russian space to envision the future of US space without SpaceX. Russia used to be a space power, but everything seems to be coming to an end. A 2800 word domestic newspaper warns of the Russian space program's rapid collapse. Titled, The Space Program is Rotting from Within, the article begins with the declaration that Russia's space program has a shortage of competent and highly qualified staff, obsolete facilities and technology, and systemic leadership weakness. And that's just the opening paragraph. Dmitry Popov, the author of the article, pops off on the state that Russia's space companies are delinquent on promised deliveries for hundreds of contracts. He said Roscosmos is struggling even to build its mainstay vehicles, the Soyuz rockets and Progress spacecraft. Besides that, there are a bunch of other projects that have been beset by construction delays and corruption under Rogazin's not-so-strict stewardship. The overall portrait Popoff paints of Roscosmos is that of a wasteful, increasingly decrepit enterprise. Increasingly, Russia's space program seeks to project its greatness in space through symbolic acts rather than technological achievements, such as the launch of a Russian movie star, sending a robot named Fedor to space, or making, entirely, hollow promises about a moon landing in 2030. As a result, hundreds of billions if not trillions of rubles fly away into space but fecklessly and pointlessly disappear down the drain. All these beautiful PR presentations of art decorated rockets and wild promises are still little more than cover for the rapid collapse of Russia's space industry. These things easily remind us of the future for a certain space agency in our own backyard. It looks like NASA is moving forward and backward with Roscosmos, which begs the question, if there's no SpaceX, what's left of US space? Well, let's not forget that China has come out of its darkest period. They are making strong strides and quickly catching up, even surpassing the US. Most of all, they are wholeheartedly supported by their own government. And that is the biggest motivation for the breakthroughs. And what about us? Well, without SpaceX, we have nothing to compete with China. Conversely, if Starship actually works, it will not only be beneficial to SpaceX, but to the whole United States space operations. And at that point, the US will have the biggest advantage in, in the space race that other countries can only hope to match for decades. Tesla, SpaceX, Musk, and all of his talents are a blessing to the country. And we wait for the right decisions from the leader. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. That's all for today. Which part did you like the most? Every comment and share helps us grow. Thanks a lot.